The main goal of pretty much every core series Pokemon game is to become the champion by battling trainers with your Pokemon and ultimately cementing your status by entering the Hall of Fame. But what would happen if you enter the Hall of Fame without any Pokemon? Would it even let you do it? What would happen? Make sure to like and subscribe for more Pokemon videos, and let's find out! First, we have Pokemon Red and Blue, where it all began. Arguably the most broken Pokemon games to date, with how much you can do with convoluted glitches and so many oversights. I decided to just whip out the old action replay, and I used the walkthrough walls code to reach the Hall of Fame. This was a bit harder than I thought it would be, since no matter what, Professor Oak always stops us before we head up too far north and into Route 1, and then the game just enters a loop with Professor Oak walking around that never ends because he doesn't know where to find us. If we go too far east or west from Pallet Town 2, the game just crashes, and if we go into the lab with Professor Oak, we can't exit either without picking our starter Pokémon. Instead, we have to head south through Cinnabar Island, and all the way around the Cantor region while avoiding any trainers or wild battles, since the game just freaks out if you enter a battle with no Pokemon. Probably because the game doesn't expect you to battle without having any Pokemon at all. This was a bit weirder than expected since so many NPCs just bugged out and looked like they came straight out of some weird Pokemon creepypasta. When we finally make it to the Indigo Plateau, we have a bit of trouble at the badge clearing gate. It doesn't let us pass at any point, similar to what Professor Oak did when we tried to pass through him and go to Route 1, so we have to use another cheat this time around that gives us all 8 badges so we can pass the badge checks. This lets us pass all of the guards and go right through the Victory Road, and into the Elite Four. Then we walk through the doors of each of the Elite Four members' rooms, but the strange thing is that for Agatha's room at the very end, we can only go through the right door and not the left door, as if we go through the left door, the game just crashes. Not really sure why that happened, since we were able to go through the left door for every other Elite Four room. Then we sneak behind Lance to avoid the cutscene that automatically triggers to cause us to battle him, walk right past our rival who just doesn't even try to talk to us when he sees us, and into the Hall of Fame room. We chat with Professor Oak for a little bit, who tells us that we still have lots to do with our Pokedex since we've only caught zero Pokémon. Sorry to disappoint you, Professor Oak. Then instead of showing our team gliding across the screen before entering the Hall of Fame like it normally does, the screen just goes white and the credits roll. The funny thing here is, even after the credits roll and we load back into the game back in Pallet Town, if we try to go into Route 1, Professor Oak still stops us to tell us to pick our starter Pokémon, since we still haven't picked our starter even though we're in the Hall of Fame. I even went back down to Cinnabar Island to access the Pokémon Center to check the Hall of Fame in the PC, and there was just no option for the Hall of Fame there even though we technically did enter it. Now, for Pokémon Yellow, the end result is pretty much identical to what it was in Pokémon Red and Blue, but we can actually do this really convoluted glitch in Yellow version that alters the game's memory and changes the warp location from the door exiting our house at the very start of the game, to lead us to the Hall of Fame instead of leading us out to Pallet Town. This one was a lot more glitched out, and when we enter the Hall of Fame, Professor Oak just says this bunch of random jumbled stuff. Kinda neat. But overall, it's really not too different than what it was in Pokémon Red and Blue. Gold and Silver are quite the change though, as in these games if we battle a trainer Pokémon or battle a wild Pokémon, the game would just end the battle instead of starting it right away. So all I have to do is talk to any trainer and we just defeat them. This makes things a bit easier compared to some other Pokemon games because the chances of the games just breaking are far less, and if we run into a wild Pokemon we don't have to worry about that. We had a little trouble once I reached the actual Elite Four though, since we couldn't just walk right through the doors like we did in Red and Blue. And then I remembered we could just talk to the trainers in the Elite Four and battle them which would just end the battle immediately resulting in our victory. So we technically beat the Elite Four this time in Gold and Silver, with zero Pokémon in our party and zero Pokémon seen or caught even. When Lance inducts us into the Hall of Fame, it shows a similar screen to the ones we saw in Red and Blue, and Professor Oak tells us to look for Pokémon in grassy areas. Thanks, Professor. I'll try that next time. The credits then roll. And then for Pokémon Crystal version, it's pretty much the exact same thing as I followed the same formula as Gold and Silver, but this time we can play as a girl. Now, for Pokémon Ruby and Sapphire. I just couldn't get these games to work. No code I tried for walkthrough walls was working, and I wasn't sure why. So I just went right to Emerald version since I figured the outcome in Emerald version would be very similar to how it was in Ruby and Sapphire, much like how Crystal version was very similar to how it was in Gold and Silver. This time around we have to do something similar to what we did in Red and Blue where we just use a walkthrough walls code to walk across the entire region, but this time the overworld and the NPCs in general were far less bugged out. If we got into a battle, we just sent out this glitched question mark Pokemon, then white out, so we also have to be careful of that. 
But since we have to go through a ton of water because it's the Hoenn region and because Evergrande City is in the middle of the water, it's impossible to not run into a Pokemon on our journey there, so we have to use another code that stops random wild battles from occurring, which allow us to finally make it to Evergrande City and the Elite Four. Once in Sydney's room, I try the walkthrough walls code to go to the next room, but that just doesn't work. Then I try to battle him with no Pokemon, but that of course doesn't work because we have no Pokemon. Then I found out we can just use yet another code that warps us to the Hall of Fame room when we enter any other room. Kind of similar to what we did in Yellow version, but instead of relying on a glitch, we just use a cheating device. This could have saved us a ton of time and brain power if I realized it like 30 minutes sooner. But after reaching the Hall of Fame and talking to Wallace, we walk a bit past the machine and out of bounds to enter our Pokemon to the Hall of Fame. Then we start placing our Pokemon down, even though we don't have any. Only six are supposed to go down because of course you can only have six Pokemon on your team at a time, but the game kept putting more Pokeballs down past six until it just stopped randomly. I waited a few minutes to see what would happen and nothing happened, the game just stopped here. So I guess we actually can't enter the Hall of Fame in Emerald version with zero Pokemon. For Fire Red and Leaf Green, I decided to use a similar warp code like we just did in Emerald version instead of having to rely on walk through walls and worry about badge checks like we did in Red and Blue. This time we approached the machine instead of walking right through it like we did in Emerald version, but we still placed down a ton of extra Pokeballs before the game just stopped, so we technically don't get to enter the Hall of Fame in this game either, which is unfortunate. With pretty much all of the Game Boy era of Pokemon games out of the way, sorry Ruby and Sapphire, let's move on to Pokemon Diamond and Pearl. This one was probably the craziest one yet. Diamond and Pearl are notorious for having what is known as the tweaking glitch, where basically if you move your bike fast enough between two different loading planes, it confuses the game and lets you just walk into the endless void. We can just use the walkthrough walls code to accomplish this task instead of relying on the bike because it's a bit easier this way. And we also have to get to Jubilife City with no Pokemon in order to do this actual glitch. In Jubilife City, we go to the third floor of the TV station, then walk through the walls and stand in the top left corner. Then we keep on walking to the left through the Floroma Meadow until we arrive in the Veilstone department store, although all we see is this black void, of course. Then we save and reset the game and load back up and move over to the left a bit more to reach the Pokemon League. We save and reset, but this time we hold left as we're loading up the game. The game will show us in the abyss, but we'll be entering the Hall of Fame, technically. We get the usual speech from the professor here, then the screen just goes black and nothing else happens. This is actually a tactic that has been used in some speedruns, that's where I found it. And if you want to watch some Diamond and Pearl speedruns, they have a lot more of these glitches and it's pretty cool. For Platinum version, I tried a similar warp code like I did in Emerald version, but they didn't work as they were warping me to these weird random locations that just froze the game a few seconds in. And we can't use the same void idea strategy as we did in Diamond and Pearl. I tried the walkthrough walls method, which had some glitchy results, but we were able to get all the way to Cynthia, although we still have to battle her. Since we have no Pokemon, we just send out this weird glitch square Pokemon that loses after one turn, and there isn't anything else we can do. We did get this occasional text box that popped up that just showed a bunch of question marks and said the word fainted, which was pretty funny though. Occasionally Spiritomb would just go for Psychic and that would just freeze the game as well. Now for what is either the best Pokemon game or the worst Pokemon game depending on who you ask, Pokemon Heart Gold and Soul Silver. This was a bit easier than the previous couple of Pokemon games since we can use the walkthrough walls code without running into any Pokemon. Then in the Victory Road, if we stay out of bounds as much as possible, Pokemon don't spawn outside of here which would trigger a battle. We only have to go in bounds a couple of times to climb the ladders in the Victory Road and to exit the Victory Road and luckily we didn't run into anything at all. Once in the actual Elite Four, we can then walk through walls again to go through each door of the Elite Four rooms. And once we reach Lance's room, we walk around him out of bounds into the Hall of Fame room so we don't trigger his cutscene. Lance then lectures us in the Hall of Fame room a bit. And when we approach the Hall of Fame machine to enter our Pokemon, we only have one Pokeball to put down this time instead of like 50 like we did in some other games. The screen goes black and it just stays black. The music kept playing, so I let the game run for about five minutes or so and nothing happened. So I guess we can't enter the Hall of Fame in Harkold and Soul Silver with no Pokemon either. So that takes us through the first four generations of Pokemon trying to enter the Hall of Fame with no Pokemon at all, and unfortunately that's where we have to stop for now at least. I couldn't exactly figure out how to do this type of thing for any other game that comes after Harkold and Soul Silver, but if you guys want to see a follow-up to this, let me know in the comments down below and I could definitely look into it and try to make that a possibility. With all that out of the way, thank you so much for watching, have a great rest of your day, and bye bye.